John Noe unveils Greater Than We Believe with your host, Stephen King. Well, we're back, and you're here. Thank you. Welcome. My name is Stephen King. This is my friend, John Noe. We are putting on a weekly series, teaching series, um, under the big heading of Greater Than We Believe. And we have a subheading we're working under right now called Kingdom Christianity. We've had uh, several videos under the Kingdom Christianity banner, and we're continuing that theme. Uh, today, we are moving on to video number 59, uh, Kingdom Christianity, the Kingdom Conundrum. John, you're going to have to explain conundrum for some of us because we're not all learned like you. <laughs> so tell us about the conundrum and then what we can do about it. Well, we're coming out of transformational imagination. Okay. In our last. Okay. Jesus' main technique for presenting the kingdom and the reasons that's so effective and why we need to recover that. Yes. And resuscitate that. But uh, brothers and sisters, the hard reality is this. We are facing a battle of two faiths, of two world views. Christianity teaches God is sovereign mm -hmm. over all his creation. Secular humanism teaches that man is sovereign mm. over all that has evolved mm. up to this moment in time. The winning faith will determine the future of America and many other countries. And whether or not your, my, and your children and grandchildren will live in a society that is free or oppressed. Hmm. Once again, make no mistake, Stephen, as Gary DeMar in his Biblical Worldview magazine in February 2007 very well stated, he said, young children are plainly being targeted for conversion to secularism, whether in schools yeah. or otherwise, yeah. internet, music, yep. you name it, and for conversion to the secular teaching on homosexuality yep. and transgendered and LBGQXYZ or whatever it is. Consequently, drawing them out of that veritable moral wilderness that's being promulgated on them in public schools, colleges, and universities is absolutely essential. I agree. And in movies, internet, and so forth and so forth. However, if we want to transform our declining culture, we must first transform ourselves and our churches. And if unity on this issue of the kingdom was impossible... Jesus would never have prayed for his followers to be as one. What? John 17, 20, 23. Would you agree? Mm. Obviously, not all will be attracted. Some will hate what we're saying because they hated Christ's kingdom. Yes. And they'll hate you and me. Mm -hmm. for proclaiming this, just as they did Jesus in his day, John 15, 18, for example, and many more. But many will be drawn, mm -hmm. just as they were in Jesus' day and time. They'll be drawn by Jesus' T.I., mm -hmm. transformational imagination, mm -hmm. presentation of the kingdom, and compelled by this transformational offer of love, joy, peace, power, mercy, justice, and more. It's a winning proposition. Yes. And it's a winning faith mm -hmm. for persuasively drawing people of all nations. That's the gospel. Isn't that what uh, our friend uh, Rich Lightheart talks about? Yeah. Disciple all nations. Yes. As being the proper translation. Correct. Uh, Matthew 28, what is that? 20? 19 and 20. 19 and 20. Yeah. 
of drawing up people of all nations to desire the beauty of life in the kingdom of God here and now, to better ourselves and to see and enter this universal available reality here and now. Yes. Make no mistake, Stephen, the kingdom of God is the world's brightest hope. Only hope. <laughs> it's the doorway to seeing yourself differently and realizing the fullness of God in your life mm -hmm. and through your life into other people's lives. It's the avenue to everything the Christian agenda should be about today. Yes. And it's not. It's the river of life that transcends human politics, secular social movements, stodgy reductionist Christian traditions, and most certainly, Jesus' kingdom-centered redemption goes through and beyond personal salvation into the ultimate salvation of the entire world. Mm. Lives, families, relationships, laws, institutions, nations, our whole world. And as we shall continue to see, Stephen, this realization is the complete mission of Christ. To bring the kingdom of God and salvation into our world and in that order. Yes. Unfortunately... When we come to the subject of the kingdom in today's church and churches, we run smack into a bewildering maze of conflict and confusion. Yes. I call this maze the king, king, kingdom conundrum. Okay. <laughs> it's a maze. That's the word. It's yes. a maze okay. of conflict and confusion, the subject of this video. It seems many Christians understand the kingdom of God quite differently mm -hmm. than what we've been talking about. Yes. And from the way Jesus presented it. And this significant deficiency demands that we delve into it and devote the rest of this video to it. Who is the author of confusion? The old wicked one. Who is not the author of confusion? Our father. 1 Corinthians 14, 55. Mm -hmm. For God is not the author of our confusion. We are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can pick that up. Yeah, I think they can read your lips on that one. <laughs> <laughs> in view of the significance, Stephen, of the kingdom of God that it has in the Bible, the central emphasis that Jesus placed upon it, and its primacy in the worldview of our forefathers in the faith who came to this country and founded this country upon Christian, Judeo-Christian principles and all that stuff, I propose that we once again place it front and center and proclaim and teach it boldly and without hindrance, yes. rather than timidly or not at all and with hindrance, yes. as we have been. As did the Apostle Paul, Acts 28, 31, 19, 8, 2 Timothy 4, 17, and more. Hence, many erroneous notions and unsound concepts must be corrected and unlearned and purged. And unlearning and purging is... Well, unlearning is the hardest form of learning, well, and purging hard, yes. is the hardest form of living. You, very you, painful, you, yes. When are you going to clean that room up? <laughs> <laughs> Sad to say, most Christians today are basically kingdom illiterate, especially in regard to the time and nature for the arrival of the everlasting form of the kingdom of God. Consequently, we are paying a tremendous price by settling for a kingdom-deficient gospel a kingdom-deficient faith and a kingdom-deficient worldview mm -hmm. in much of Christendom today. No question about it, we are reaping what we have sown. As many different competing and conflicting views, Stephen, have long held sway over the people of God. And most of these views will not stand up to an honest and sincere test of Scripture, which is what we're going to do. But such is the danger of exalting human speculations, theories, and beliefs above the Word of God. Hmm. The Word of God calls those the traditions of men, Amen. Yes. which make the Word of God a little Amen. or no effect. Yes. Well, they're rampant today. Yes. As we proceed through this maze of confusion and conflicting kingdom beliefs that we're going to do ahead, ask yourself these three questions that I get from that I've gotten from McLaren's book, The Secret Message of Jesus. And he says these three questions. He says, here's the questions we need to ask ourselves. Number one, here you go. Number one, what, you can see, I, so I'm not, oh, making, yeah. I'm not making this stuff up. What is the core message of Jesus? Uh, 
or what if, excuse me, what if the core message of Jesus has been unintentionally misunderstood or intentionally distorted? Intentionally distorted. What, and that's question number one. Two, what if many have sincerely valued some aspects of Jesus' message while missing or even suppressing other more important dimensions? Mm. Well, I'll take this one, but no, yeah. that one Pick I won't. Pick and choose. I'll take, yeah. Yeah. Third, what if many have carried on a religion that faithfully celebrates Jesus in ritual and art and teaches about Jesus in sermons and books and sings about Jesus in songs and hymns and theorizes about Jesus in seminaries and classrooms, but mm. somewhere along the way missed rich, radical treasures hidden in the essential message of Jesus, which is the kingdom of God. Pretty serious stuff, don't you think? Yes. Indeed, Stephen, we have seriously misunderstood and substantially undervalued the essential message and central teaching of Jesus Christ and to our detriment. So, welcome to the world of the May, or welcome to the maze, yeah. <laughs> of misconceptions and conceptions regarding the kingdom of God. Would you help me? Will you grab sure. a copy of that book there? And that's just share some of these. It's, it's, this is on page uh, uh, 144 in A Once Mighty Faith. And I'll tell you what, I'll, 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 uh, I'll start and we'll just alternate How's okay. that as we go through. Can you keep up with me on that? so. All right, uh, this, this is titled in the book, well, here it is, Welcome to the Maze of Misconceptions and Conceptions. Here's the first one, regarding the kingdom of God. Okay. It's here. It's not here. It's not fully here. It's kind of here, in some sense. Mm -hmm. It's partially here, but will be completed in the future. Already, not yet. Jesus has not yet set up and established his kingdom. Jesus failed to deliver and bring in the promised kingdom. It's in mystery form now and only spiritually discerned. But someday it will be established in glory for all to see. Today, all we have is a foretaste of the kingdom. It's a political administration. It's a social order. It's a religious experience and exists only in human hearts. Now, it's the invisible kingdom of grace, but the visible kingdom of glory is yet to come at Christ's second coming. Whoops, there it is, there it is. <laughs> the world is his kingdom, and we are his subjects. The kingdom is the church. The kingdom is Christianity. The kingdom is a blanket term for the salvation believers have and are awaiting. It's the Holy Spirit empowerment within Christians. It's everywhere Christians live and work, in order, in, in other words, in all of society. It's God's future program for the world. It's God's future program for Israel. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are two different kingdoms. They are synonymous. The kingdom is within you. The kingdom is the people who are redeemed and ruled by Christ, by Jesus. It's the perfected community of God's people, Israel, kingdom citizens, church. It's good deeds done by good people in the public sector for the common good. The kingdom is a transformed earthly society. When it comes, everyone will know it and see it. It's a spiritual kingdom in heaven. It's hidden and obscured today by sin. It's progressive Christianity of the world. It's achieved on earth through a natural process of social action. It's not present today at all, but was postponed and withdrawn by God due to the Jews' rejection of and crucifixion of Jesus. When Jesus comes back, second coming, He'll set up his visible kingdom for a thousand years in Israel. When Jesus comes back, he'll set up his kingdom forever. The church is a temporary substitute for the kingdom, a parenthesis in God's plan for Israel. It's a general symbol. It's a concrete reality. It's not of this world, but of the next. It's an ap apocalyptic symbol standing for realities the human mind cannot ap ap <laughs> comprehend. A translate transcendent order beyond time and space. It won't come until the world as we know it ends. It's here fully as a spiritual kingdom, but with its miraculous signs, wonders, and miracles manifested by Jesus at all, withdrawn by God. We are currently living in a pre-kingdom time. When Jesus returns, he'll set up his theocratic millennial kingdom in Jerusalem. 
a restored nationalistic Israel to be followed by the eternal and then the final kingdom. When Jesus' kingdom comes, he will transform our present world, comfort every sorrow and heal every imperfection. It will put everything right that has been wrong and bring perfect harmony in a place of discord. Discord. There will be no more sin, evil, wars, injustice, strife, sickness, disease, pain, dying, crying, or pollution. There will be an abundance of food, animals, and man living in perfect harmony. People living to be a thousand years old. A perfect world. A restored Garden of Eden with everything provided. Perfect joy. Perfect fellowship with God and Christ as Christians reign and rule over this entire world. Are you done yet? I'm all mixed up. <laughs> Quite a maze, isn't it? Oh my goodness! Is that is that a maze of conundrum? Oh my goodness! Yes. Of conflict, of confusion. Oh. I mean, it meets us at every turn in the church. Every and anywhere the topic of the kingdom is brought up, you're liable to run into some of this stuff. Some of it is partially true. Yeah, it's spoken with passion. That doesn't necessarily make it all right. Many Christians, however, Stephen, just accept some of these beliefs uncritically. Mm -hmm. Because that's what they've been told. Sure. Well, that's what they heard. But they never bother to investigate to see if they are true or to check out alternative interpretations and explanations. Therefore, as Menz, Gene Menz, in his book, The Kingdom Focused Church, points out, to many Christians, the kingdom of God is about as clear as Bud. <laughs> Bud. <laughs> Isn't that what we just went like, like, through wading through? Yeah. We are taught little about it. Mm -hmm. Why are we taught little about it? I mean, it was only the central teaching of Jesus. Yeah. You would think it would have some relevance. Yeah, so. <laughs> so as a result, our understanding of and excitement about the kingdom things is simply absent mm -hmm. from our lives. And doesn't that describe present day, a lot of present day Christianity, sad to say. And yet, Stephen, Jesus proclaimed to his disciples as well as for us today that the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you. Hmm. Past tense. Been given, yes. Matthew 13, 11, Luke 8, 10. Well, what... <laughs> Which of these secrets, who ha, who's got the right secrets? <laughs> How many of these secrets can you or your people in your church uh, name? Mm. Most certainly, ideas have consequences. Which brings us to, grab that book again, okay. what I call, turn to page 147, okay. what I call <clears throat> attitudes and behavioral comparities. You see, Stephen, based upon how one envisions the kingdom, yeah. and there's all sorts of, we've just seen different yeah. ideas, how one envisions the kingdom, he or she will be motivated differently in regard to what they should or should not be doing in the here and now and in this world. So here is a comparative of conflicting attitudes and behaviors produced by different views of the kingdom. Okay. So why don't I read the ones on the left-hand column, okay. and you read read the corresponding one on the right column, okay. and we'll see how this is still a maze, hmm. a, a, a kingdom conundrum, a maze of conflict and confusion. All right, attitudes and behaviors. You ready? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Wait until the kingdom comes. Hmm. Advance the kingdom that's here. The world is destined to get worse and worse until Christ comes back. The world must get better and better so Christ can come back. There is nothing we can or should do to bring in the kingdom. God has commanded his people to seek and advance the kingdom. We win by leaving and forsaking this world. We win by staying and taking dominion over this world. Let's save as many people as we can before it's too late. Let's take over this world for Christ before it gets away. <laughs> Set your mind on things above, not on things of this earth as God and Christ have commanded. Take authority over all things in heaven and on earth as God and Christ have commanded. 
<laughs> pessimism, pessimism, pessimistic, excuse me, for the future of humankind. No, optimistic for the future of humankind. Resigned to the failure of the church in today's world. Upset with the failure of the church in today's world. Social and political indifference and impotency. Social and political activism and potency. Separate yourselves from the evil of this world, world negating pietism. Bring all society and institutions of this world under the rule of Christ, world transforming dominionism. So, <coughs> Stephen, who's right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what happened to these secrets that Jesus revealed to everybody? Man, we, we, we made a mess of them in this maze, have we not? No what question. Mean we? <laughs> Collectively. Yes, I agree. Everybody uh, except you and I. Share, yeah, we all share a little bit of responsibility. Uh, no, 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 not you and I. <laughs> or our listeners. Yeah, okay. But, you know, and viewers, excuse me. No question about it, these are real differences. Yes, they are. And they create real problems yes. for Christians and for the church. So which view represents true Christianity and determines how we should live the Christian life? Unfortunately, many of these views have blinded us to our responsibilities on earth. And that's because, as Monroe, where's rediscovering the church? What do I do with that? Well, it's down there in my cast off pile. <laughs> as Mo explains, yeah. Oh, what the hell I did with it? Oh, well, that's all right. As Monroe explains in his book, Rediscovering the Kingdom, that we've held up here before, we do not understand the nature or the significance of the kingdom of God. Hmm. Many in the church have discovered the king, but they have no clue about the kingdom that he came to bring mankind. Yes. And the church's response has been one of gross neglect neglect and inadequacy. Yes. Is it any wonder then, therefore, why we Christians are so divided and ineffective compared to what we could hmm. and should be? That is the kingdom conundrum. Yes. Which brings us to our topic of our next hmm. video, which <laughs> is... Okay. The next one after that will be video number 60, Kingdom Christianity, Two Major Problems. This will be a part one of, of a two-part series, Two Major Problems. You mean you're going to say we got problems all over here? <laughs> problems is why God put us here. Yeah, to solve the problems. <laughs> <laughs> well, to address, to, to to work on them, sure. yeah, yeah. yeah. Not not to go one of these, yeah, uh, yeah a little, little monkey yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, folks, are you thoroughly confused like I am? It's sad, but when we were reading those absolutely diametrically opposite expressions, as commanded by Jesus, and <laughs> I've heard them all, or most of them. Have you? Yeah, I've I've heard a lot of that at different times in my life and at different times it hits you and it sounds right. Other times it hits you and it sounds wrong. But You know, I've collected those over 30 years. I believe that. And and what's sad is is that I think a, a lot of really good God-fearing people out there are just confused and they're just kind of waiting to see once the smoke clears what's left. So John and I are trying to cause a little smoke. <laughs> and so, sad to say that confusion is not going to be cleared up no. in your church because they don't know how to do it. Right. When you have, uh, we're not trying to disparage your church leaders, your pastors, and those people that teach. What we are trying to do is call attention to the fact that there is a worldwide problem in Christianity right now, and the way the church as a whole has left the original teaching of Jesus. And so we all collectively, church leaders and all, need to take responsibility for that, and we need to lead the charge on being Bereans, getting back into the scripture, back into the word, hmm. and seeing that everything is so. And, uh, it's time for us to take charge. So I so I'm hope we're motivating you to do. John, thank you so much for your hard work on that. We're looking forward to the next video. We're going to bring up a couple problems for you here. It's going to take. <laughs> it's going to take more than one more. Yeah, we got a lot more planned for you. God willing, we hope in the series will go quite a while. We don't know, and we're not going to have an agenda on this. Uh, as God's spirit moves, and as He 
uh, gives John things to want to talk out and back, bring to you, we'll just continue coming as long as he's willing. And uh, I'm just hoping that it's doing you some good. I'm hoping that you're praying for our ministry. I hope God's blessing you. Take care and good night. All right. Thank you.